What I love about being a Quaker is you can go to any Quaker meeting in the world and you don't know what you're going to get. And I like that. I mean, I went to meeting in a closet in New Delhi and I went to meeting in a, in a forest in the Midwest uh, as I went to meeting in the living room on the floor. I, and then not only is it the places all different, but the people are all different and the messages are all different. This meeting is quiet. This meeting is not. This meeting has somebody who regularly speaks and you can hear the whole meeting go, oh, he's talking. It's fabulous. It's absolutely fabulous. I think it's one of the greatest gifts Quakers has ever given the world. I'm Jay E. McNeil, Washington, D.C. I'm a member of Friends Meeting of Washington, D.C. Anybody who knows me would know, uh, even if they'd never been to meeting, they would know I'm a frequent speaker in meeting. I, I'm a storyteller. I've been a storyteller since I was a teenager. It just comes completely naturally to me. Um, and people say it's, you know, they often say, well, you talk because you're a lawyer. And I said, no, I'm a lawyer because I talk. And I, I, I talk in meeting. And it's a little bit of a burden in some ways because I really want to speak out of the spirit. And it's so easy for me to speak. I really have to push down, push down, and try not to speak too soon, to wait until I am absolutely compelled to stand up and speak. And that isn't as easy as that sounds because I know there are lots of people who are fighting in the other direction. No, I don't want to speak. I don't want to speak. Don't make me. And I'm going, I want to speak. I want to speak. Stop it. Uh, so that's, it's, it's, it's got its own burden to it. But I like to think about the uh, probably apocryphal story about woman who was an early uh, Quaker who opposed slavery. And he traveled among friends to meeting houses. And the story was he was in a meeting house and there was an Indian attack on the, on, the, on the village. And so everybody left to go protect their houses. But Woman was there. It wasn't his meeting. It wasn't his fight. He, he, he stood up at the appointed hour and started giving his unimpassioned message about the evils of enslavement. And um, one of the largest indigo uh, farm owners, he comes in, he hears Woman speaking, and he gets furious, and he runs up to Woman, and he starts yelling at him, how dare you speak to me that way? And I've always envisioned Woman raising one eyebrow. I don't know why, it just seemed appropriate. Raising one eyebrow and saying, God gives me the words to speak. I leave it to God to find the ears to listen. And so when I would travel and among friends, uh, some, and sometimes to give workshops, and sometimes only one person would show up at my workshop, and the organizers would be embarrassed, and I'd go, I would, I would give that quote, because I, I, I honestly believed that, uh, you know, I, it's not mine to worry about who's here, you know? And this, with meeting for worship, yeah, I, I'm a frequent speaker, and sometimes my, I sit down after my message, and I'm like, what the heck was I talking about? But then people will come up to me after meeting and say, your message really spoke to me. And I'm like, okay, I don't have to understand it. It's not my job. It's my job to stand up and speak when I'm compelled to speak and leave it to God to find the ears to listen. Thanks so much for watching this Quaker Speak video. We release a new video every other Thursday. We'd like to thank the Friends Committee on National Legislation for sponsoring this week's video. The Friends Committee on National Legislation, or FCNL, is a national, nonpartisan Quaker organization that lobbies Congress for peace, justice, and environmental stewardship. Join FCNL and tens of thousands of people, Quakers and Friends, who share a belief in the power of relationship building to advance the world we seek. Visit FCNL online at www.fcnl.org. Thanks again for watching and have a happy Thursday.